Hey everyone, today's video is all about my iPad Pro, the apps I use, my setup, how I use everything. Let's talk iPad. Okay, before we get started, a quick shout out to our sponsor, Superhuman Email. It's a minimal, fast, productivity focused email app that's made me love tackling my inbox every single day. Learn more at the link in the description and later on in this video. Now, it's been a minute since my last iPad Pro video, but trust me, I've been using this thing every single day for work, art, productivity, and also entertainment. This is the 11-inch M1 iPad Pro, which came out earlier this year, and it's still amazing. It's still fast, it's still beautiful, great to use. I love this tablet. I also use it with the Magic Keyboard and Apple Pencil, both of which have dbrand skins for a little bit more customization. I've also added a lavender camera skin to the iPad as well, just for an additional pop of color, and the Apple Pencil. Yes, it is the Apple Pencil 2, but it has a silver ring from dbrand as well. It's just a very simple chrome skin, which makes it look a bit more premium in my opinion. I always liked how the Apple Pencil one looked, and this kind of brings back that design. So that's the actual hardware itself. Now unlocking the iPad or greeted with my main home screen. The wallpaper I have here is from the Rise 2 wallpaper pack I worked on with my friend and fellow YouTuber Tom Byte Review. We killed it with this pack, I love all these new colors. You can check it out at the link in the description. And we also have two widgets at the top corner as well. Now if I swipe left, we have the slide over widget view. And here I have just one widget, it's the calculator. And it's a really simple, easy to use widget just for calculating quick things on the go. So we have a super large music widget, a weather widget, Apple TV widget where I can just tap and launch right into the show that I'm watching, as well as the good task widget. We also have a procreate widget so I can jump right into the drawings I'm working on, as well as a files widget as well. The files widget makes the iPad Pro feel more like a desktop experience because you can just tap a file, you jump right into it, just like on a desktop where you can have files pretty much anywhere. This is the closest you can get on an iPad. So now. Let's talk about apps. So I have all my main apps that I use in the dock. The first one I wanna really talk about here is Procreate. Now, I know, I know, everybody talks about Procreate whenever they talk about the iPad, but honestly, it is a killer app. In Procreate, I draw up storyboard shots, rough concepts, as well as thumbnail ideas before I actually execute them, as well as, of course, my wallpapers. Many of you have asked which app I use to create my wallpapers, and it's Procreate. There are so many different brushes, so many great tools, there's layers, it's very easy to use. It's just one of the best apps available on iPad for sure. The next app is Affinity Photo, which is basically Photoshop for the iPad. I've talked about it many times before, but honestly, it is a game-changing app for iPadOS. I've used Photoshop since the first day I started using a computer, and honestly, this has pretty much every single feature. The actual Photoshop app for the iPad is missing so many features that it's basically not usable for much of anything. This has everything you need. Pen tool, clone stamp, layer support, font support. You can even import Photoshop files into Affinity Photo and export Photoshop files out of Affinity Photo as well. So you can essentially work on a project on your Mac in Photoshop, for example, airdrop it over to the iPad, work on it in Affinity Photo, and export into whatever file type you want, including a PSD. You can't beat that. Also, it's not like a monthly subscription thing. It's a one-time purchase, and that's it. I've edited so many thumbnails, photos, other projects. It is an essential app for the iPad. Next up is my note-taking app of choice, Notability. Now for me, Notability has always been the gold standard of note-taking apps until very recently when they introduced this new subscription plan, which honestly isn't super ideal, but thankfully because I actually bought this app a while ago, I get to keep the full version without paying for a subscription. I don't know, I just like this app quite a bit. It has different paper types, you can export files as PDFs, it has iCloud support, you can draw and write, change your pen type, you can select text and move it very easily. It just has all the things I need, it works super well, I like this app. There's also Keynote, and for me Keynote has always been my go-to presentation app that got me throughout school, and today I use it for presentations, pitches, projects, it is super useful, and I love it. My university recently had me do a live talk about being a YouTuber, running a business, life as a creator, and I whipped together a very simple visual aid in Keynote for this presentation, and it all worked out super, super well. 
this is all about making money as a creator. It's kind of the dream come true, right? But, uh, you know, I don't really know anything, honestly. <laughs> and i'm pretty much making up the rules as i go and that's awesome there are no rules you can make mistakes you can learn how to do things differently if something works one time keep on trying it if something doesn't work at all then don't do it again experiment just an example of how i use keynote and this app got me through many years of high school college university making presentations keynote is my go-to there's also, of course, pages, which these days I don't really use as often as I used to when I was in school, but still, it's still super useful. It's basically Apple's own free word processor, and throughout school, it was pretty much my designated essay application. Today, I use it for typing up concept proposals for brands, as well as drafting up invoices as well. It's simple, easy to use, and it's free. Next is voice memos. All of my best ideas, all the concepts I come up with, everything in development starts in the voice memos app. As soon as an idea comes to mind, I open up voice memos, start recording, I just talk and talk and talk, and that's how ideas are born. If I have an idea for a design, a thumbnail, a video idea, or even how to word something in a review, I just record it in voice memos. You just gotta get those ideas down sometimes, and this is the app to do it. We also have photos, YouTube, music, Twitter, and messages, nothing really too special, as well as my email client, Superhuman, which we'll talk about shortly. Now, opening up the app library, there's a few more interesting apps we definitely have to talk about. Now, first up is an app called Fontcase. For quite a while, I had no idea how to install fonts onto my iPad, but this app is how you do it. You can import any fonts you want into the app very easily, and from there, it creates a profile that you can install, and all your fonts show up wherever you want them. So, for example, if I go into Pages or Affinity Photo, all the fonts I just imported are right there. That's how you do it. You've heard me talk about this app quite a bit, but LumaFusion is a great video editing tool for the iPad Pro. I haven't really used it that much these days because I just got my new MacBook Pro with Final Cut and it is crazy, crazy fast. But on the go, if I have the iPad with me, I wanna edit a quick video, toss everything in LumaFusion, throw together a quick edit, rendering is crazy fast, it's very easy to use, and that's LumaFusion. It's kind of like Final Cut for the iPad, but a more lightweight version of it, I guess. There's also, of course, Rumble, which is pretty much the only augmented reality app I've really messed with on the iPad. Basically, you can create 3D rooms, add in augmented reality furniture to your current rooms with the camera, really see how things fit in your living space. You can also make 2D or 3D floor plans, add in furniture and other things to see how everything fits into a living space. We also have the Canon Camera Connect app, which basically becomes a second screen for your Canon camera. I shoot with the 90D, I love this camera, and sometimes I wanna have a bigger screen if I'm shooting a photo or a video to really see how a shot looks. It's also kinda of like a remote camera trigger as well, so I can hit a button, change settings, even if I'm farther away from the camera itself. When you're shooting by yourself, having an app that's this good is a great thing to have at your disposal. It's also one of the reasons why I'm still with Canon because this app just works so well. We also have other basic iOS stock apps as well as things like Crave for watching HBO shows and Amazon Prime Video as well. Kind of the basic things you do on an iPad when you're not working is watching videos. And of course, most importantly, we have GTA San Andreas in GTA 3. Nothing beats Grand Theft Auto for killing time. Maybe you're on a flight, you're on public transit, back of an Uber, you wanna just kill like, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes. Honestly, this game is the best. Playing main missions, side missions, driving the taxi around, obeying traffic laws, you know, it's Grand Theft Auto. It's the best. And the final app we're gonna be talking about today that I've been using over the last few weeks is called Superhuman Email, also today's sponsor. Now look, I honestly hate dealing with emails, it's the absolute worst part of my day, but Superhuman has made emails actually enjoyable. The design here is clean, minimal, and beautiful, and it actually uses AI to create a split inbox and keep everything clean and organized. It just makes it much easier to sort through everything and get to your priority emails a lot faster. There's also so many great shortcuts to get things done quicker as well, like archive, forward, reply, compose, open calendar, and even move through your inbox just by tapping one or two keys. It's stellar. Like for example, you can just hit H to remind you to check on an email later or on a different device. 
You can also use the send later feature to schedule a follow-up email to automatically send at whatever time you want, even down to have it being delivered in the recipient's own time zone. And one of my favorite features is snippets. If you reply to emails the same way very frequently, or you send a piece of information or a name or an address often, you can create these very simple templates which you can trigger by hitting the semicolon. So if you're replying to an email, hit the semicolon, choose a snippet you want, and send. Superhuman supports multiple email accounts, there's apps for all your favorite devices, a browser version, and it can help you get to that mythical inbox zero very easily. I can talk about Superhuman for days, but honestly, just check it out for yourself. Link in the description down below. Give it a go. Thanks to Superhuman for sponsoring this video. So this has been a look at my iPad Pro setup as well as all the apps I use and how I use them. It's so much fun to use for work and play and everything in between, and it really is an essential part of my life and my business. I don't know what I'd do without this thing. It's just so amazing. And thank you for watching.